Hallelujah. God's principles never change. But practices can change. And a live example, we are seeing it here, that when Adam broke the one commandment, he didn't die immediately. He didn't die. Some people say he died spiritually. That's another way of theologizing. But the command was, you shall surely die, and even today, people are dying. Archbishops, bishops, apostles, uh, sinners, Colossal, one of the poorest, the criminals, people of all kinds are affected by death. But he didn't die immediately. But what I wanted to get is that but some animals were killed. Do you agree with that? Some animals were killed, blood was spilled to cover the rocks. And then God skinned the animals and dressed them. Gave them garments of covering. It's important to know that. And throughout all the Old Testament, animals were killed to appease God <laughs> with his people. And finally, somebody, a lamb that came from God, was killed on Calvary with eternal blood so that the killings of animals was stopped, but there is somebody special who died, and his blood is eternal. So they didn't die immediately. Well, there was a time when they came, they died. Some people spiritualize and say they died uh, 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 spiritually well, but then they didn't die immediately. But some animals died. And even for us, we have not died immediately. But there is somebody who was killed on our behalf so that we can have eternal life. Hallelujah. Now, after that short introduction, I want you to list down five, five terrible, deadly rebellions that God faced. That rebellion at his face. Huh? And this is why as far as God is concerned, rebellion and all disobedience is likened to the spirit of witchcraft, the worship of idols. And among the Ten Commandments, the only commandment that has detailed, uh, 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 or detailed details of the effects of breaking that commandment is the one that involves worship of idols and, 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 and that Mambo Kamahaya witchcraft. And we have been told uh, all disobedience and all rebellion is equated to witchcraft. And this is one of the, uh, the, the commandments that deals with witchcraft and worship of idols. It, 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 it is, is detailed with its own indictment, and the judgment covers from the third to the fourth generation. You can get that in Exodus chapter 20. But what I'm saying is that the first rebellion that God encountered with the man he had made was that of Adam and Eve. When they broke the only one commandment they had and they ate the fruit. I don't know what happened after Eve was deceived and took the fruit to the man. I don't know whether this man loved him, his wife so much. Maybe he loved him. I'm just thinking loudly. <laughs> but some men will think twice. <laughs> Before you eat that win the promoter. Some men will think. <laughs> some, men, some men will think seriously. Five rebellions that God encountered, and this caused him to change his method of approach. He was he was a designer, mankind, and very explosive. He changed his design. And that design is coming number six. Is what I will give you as the, 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 the level of obedience when he called Abraham in Genesis uh, chapter 12. 
And this is why I said that I'm doing something like uh, a survey of the first 12 uh, chapters of Genesis. So, Adam and Eve rebelled, and this is recorded in Genesis chapter 3. They disobeyed God, and we all know the consequences that we suffer even today. Na kuna mahali katika adiki Romans, inasema, either Romans, Corinthians, inasema, after the disobedience of one man, sin, sin came to all humanity. But, and the obedience of another man called second honor, that righteousness can be released to all of us through faith in Jesus Christ. Amen? Second rebellion was that of Cain. Cain did two wrongs. His wrong sacrifice and his killing of his brother, Abel. You know the story. That's the second level of rebellion that God encountered. And when he confronted Cain, uh, uh, Cain was not remorseful. He was not repentant. He was never sorry. I don't think that tells us Adam and Sodom said sorry. It's only God through his mercy, through his grace. Because even in the Old Testament we can see manifestations of grace. Even after the law was given on Mount Sinai, we see many times God demonstrating his mercy and his grace. Kind, wrong sacrifice, and uh, he killed his young brother. And because you cannot destroy the plan of God. This is why I want to say, as an assurance, it doesn't matter what happens in Kenya. It doesn't matter what happens across the globe. Jesus said his church is going to be founded on the rock of angels. In the confession that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. And he declared that the gates of hell, all of them opened. They will never prevail against the church of Jesus Christ. So in, even in the Old Testament, they, every generation had remnants. Even in our, in, a, in our generation, there will still be remnants. There will be still people whose hearts are beating for Jesus. Hallelujah. So, Kaimi killed the good sheep, his brother, Abel. And by God's grace, Kusoma chapter uh, God gave Adam another son, Say, And that now restored the good line, uh, the good line of obedience and good line of righteousness. Kai kills his brother. Level three of disobedience, I'm calling it Cain's grandson, called Lamech. In chapter four, Mr. Yapule Mishomisho, Utakutakunajama, and I to a Lamech, a grandson of Cain. And as our brother was talking about some of those things that uh, affect destinies, he, he also talked about generational carnivores. The things that could come through your line, your family line, uh, 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 family line, and that could also affect you. Imagine Adam and Pumuria Mlago are rebellion, Akikiri Nikitukidogo, in affect him back to Toake Mojo. In fact, one day he woke up as a parent and he found that one of his sons has killed his other son. And this, other, this son who has killed the other one has been cast by God. Can you imagine? As a parent, you wake up and by the, your son has been killed and one which remaining is cast by God. Can you imagine? Sometimes parents can go through uh, very painful experiences. This week, we woke up hearing of uh, a, a car that crashed on six children as they were going to school. I was told it's maybe Kitui song. The other day, children burning in school. Some of them fleeing and not seeing. Parents, you can imagine, put yourself in the shoes of parents and think how, uh, imagine how they think. Kama wewe mtoto wakua mgojwa, unaliya karibu uliye damu. Mtoto wakua meenda shule, unaletua ripoti wa mbogu. Hapa sinidi Nairobi, hapa na tunandua, sikuingini. 
ati gani ya shule imegonga watoto kwa gate imagine imagine and sometimes people ask stupid innocent children where is god wao wanapenda kuomba mungu ana kwa vitu sile hayuko kai god in his in his in his image and his likeness that was put in man inside that image and likeness there is what we call free will the free will that god made gave man so god is never a dictator you have the right to obey him you have a right to disobey him even jesus on gethsemane he was given the opportunity to obey or to disobey and he wrestled with that that will and wrestled with his will baka kapita mahali akasema hivi kombe ni nzito bwana wacha inyondoke akangangana ita jasho limetoka kama ndamu amepamba finally he surrendered he surrendered he said let your will be done and when you surrender your will to that of god things change dramatically Amen. hallelujah Cain's grandson is the level of the third rebellion where my Cain's grandson called Lamech he did two great terrible sins number one, he killed a young man and he was the first man in all human creation not to be satisfied with one wife we are told he married two wives he 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 was the first polygamist genesis chapter 4 ile mstari ya mwisho hapo ukiona mahali kaini anatajwa hapo katika utaona grandson ya kaini anaitwa lamek utaona kioo wa wanawake wawili utaona meo kijana a young man and he is bragging before his two wives he is saying ni meo wa kijana ambaye amenidharau ameniweka kidole kwa macho ni meo ana ringa mbele ya his two wives so he killed a young man and he was the first polygamist lamek grandson of kai level four of rebellion that god faced and every time god was giving grace to mankind to reproduce na kuongezeka na kufikiri wa learn their lessons they rebel again god comes again uh, by grace he gives them another chance god is a god of several chances Hallelujah. He was always giving them a, a chance to multiply and to, to, to continue. But then they would mess up again. Rebellion number four is the great rebellion of Noah's generation. We all read it in Genesis chapter 6. Until they rebelled, they were so wicked that God was regretted why he created men. The Noah's generation rebelled. But this is why we said that in every generation God reserves a remnant. The Bible says Noah found favor before the Lord and he instructed him to make a an ark. And 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 animals came he was instructed to 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 allow God brought seven clean animals, seven clean birds and out of the seven God threw his provision because he gives his seed to the sower. and he gives uh, uh, bread to the eater so kule akitoka kwa safina utaona akitoa sandaka a offering of clean animals clean birds utaona hiyo ikiendelea because god had given that provision so a whole generation of no rebelled against god and god judged them and destroyed them and animals were affected by the mighty flood that came and Noah in the ark don't forget every time when god was going to send such such judgment he will not judge the righteous together with the wicked yani ndaida kimania sia nzuki na mawa i'm saying god does not mix the honey <laughs> the good honey with the, uh, those those who are sinners in his name smells kona lava yani yake he said perfect hallelujah So this is why in our generation before he destroyed the wicked people he made sure that the righteous were in the ark in the ark before he destroyed the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah he made sure that Lot and his few those uh, daughters who agreed to flee with him 
They were sick and then fire was laid from. This is why the church is going to be raptured before the great tribulation and the wrath of God is poured on planet Earth. The church will be celebrating in the skies. Pija Yesu Makofi. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Noah's generation. And I see it, Bakamu. I can't come Alimuma, Manada. The fall rebellion. A whole generation. The fifth generation of rebellion is those men and the women who build the Tower of Babel. In chapter 11. You are the chapter of Rev. Lakin to Tamariza in time. These guys, God had given the command go and multiply and spread and fill the earth. In chapter 11, we are told that they came into the plains and through their leader, possibly suspectedly, uh, Mr. Nimrod, who was a mighty hunter, they said, Let us come and build a city on these plains and make a name for ourselves. Imagine, all the reasons we are self-centered. Come and let us make a name for ourselves and build a city for ourselves. Any ministry that comes to a place where they feel it is not the kingdom of God they are building, they are making a, a kingdom for themselves, they are making a ministry for themselves. That is that kind of ministry is marked in the red X. And it's only a few days. Just like if you cut a green branch, branch of tree by outside. Okay, let her have a kiyona triangle if you are green. But you just give it time. As long as it's disconnected from the source of life, you just give it time, it is going to wither and dry and thrown into the fire. They said, come, let us build a city here for ourselves, someone in Zuri, and make a name for ourselves until God in heaven said, let's go down and check what is happening. God himself, and I told Shuda, I said, but these guys have one advantage. They are very united. They are speaking the same language. They have one project, to build a city for themselves and make a name for themselves. So, and they are unstoppable. As long as they are united, they are speaking one language, and they have one project, let us go and see what is happening. And when God came, God is invoking the Trinity, let us go. When they came, they were continuing to build the equipment at several, either one kilometer or half a kilometer. And then, God is saying, they cannot be stopped. Unless heaven intervenes, the devils and demons cannot stop. Human beings cannot stop. Only heaven can intervene. This is why God came in and, and scattered them, releasing languages. The speaking in tongues of that time, they were scattered. And a commentator said, just in the way God scattered human beings who were rebelling against him through languages. On the day of Pentecost, he united this church through languages. And even today, men and women speak in tongues as they implement the plans and the purposes of God. The men who were building the Tower of Babel, they were rebelling against God and they were scattered. And uh, through languages. So, where were you going to talk about the language? Uzema ate na anakusikia ama na usonga na imoja. Usikia ate ere. Ukisikia ere ni hako mbele. Na hivi kani. Unasonga mbele na uwe mnaelewa. Hivo hivo hivo. Kimasai. Wote wakaenda hivo hivo. And they were scattered. And now. In chapter 4. We are seeing. A line or a level of obedience. God calls Abraham in chapter 12. If you read the last section of chapter 11, utakuta kwamba unaonyesha wazazi wa Abraham pale. And in Joshua chapter 24, we start in Joshua gives us the leakage why Abraham was called by God. And this, I, I believe this was a demonstration of God's grace and mercy. Adam, uh, Abraham never qualified. 
It's just like Ruth. It's just like uh, the, the prostitute. What is the name of the prostitute? Rahab. A manifestation of God's grace and mercy even in the Old Testament. And so, uh, Joshua chapter 24 tells us, or Joshua speaking says that even me, your father Abraham, he was called by God from a community that was worshipping other gods, worshipping idols. So this is why he was told, leave your country, leave your county, leave your father's house, and I will show you where we go. If you read in Genesis 12 verse 4, it says, and so Abraham departed. So my King James, that's what I'm saying. He departed in obedience. So what we are saying is that according to scripture, Abraham was called and he was given conditions. If you obey me, there are several blessings that are listed there in chapter 6. We we'll mention them when we, we, we talk about the bridges. And in chapter in verse 4, we see a true testimony uh, that Abraham obeyed God and came out. And when we see his obedience, he makes an altar, he worships God, his life was changed. And in fact, in Genesis chapter 4, he killed a fisher after Kai, not Kai. Seth was born, and there was this generation of, uh, of, of, of lion, a blessing and obedience. And during Seth's time, men, human beings, began to pray, began to call upon the name of the Lord. What were they doing all those other chapter 1, 2, 3? <laughs> what were they doing? In chapter 4, after Seth came, we see a line of obedience and worship to God and praying to God being born. And so, this is why, as I conclude, I can declare that God changed his method of approach. Instead of cutting the whole generation of human beings, he pinned in our world to call a family. He called Abraham and his wife. And of course, Lot, who was a nephew, led to him. Sometimes it's good to follow somebody whom you see that God is doing something with him. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mana ukibatlia huyu jamaa nephew alifuata Lot na kila mahali I mean Abraham na kila mahali anaenda eh anema ya utajiri kitokelezea ilikuwa inamwagiliwa Lot. So Lot was like ile miti inaitwa inaitwa ile parasite trees that stand on others and eat from the sack. <laughs> So Lord was depending uh, son on Abraham's blessedness. And uh, that is not bad, because this is why God brings us to help us economic empowers and facilitators, supports us and supporters of ministry by his mercy. Five rebellions, and then number six is the level of obedience with Abraham as a family called by God, by sovereign will.